Today in Matt's class, Kristen and I are gonna show you how to draw an awesome bounty hunter. So I am hanging out today with Kristen Rose Merlot, and let me just say this now, yes, that is her real name. Yes, it is. And uh, so you definitely wanna follow her on Instagram and see some of her amazing artwork. Today what we're gonna do, we are gonna take you through the steps of what it would take to draw an awesome bounty hunter. And what I thought would be great today is to do kind of a challenge scenario where I'm gonna draw on one side of the board, you're gonna draw on the other side. I'm not gonna be able to see what you drew, you're not gonna be able to see what I drew, but James holding the camera is gonna be moving around and kind of checking out the progress. And we only have one person here who's gonna be able to judge, so James, you're gonna to have to tell us who the winner is. What are you thinking for yours? So I'm actually in the middle of doing a bit of sci-fi concepting for a comic I'm working on right now. So uh -huh. I think I like the idea of combining a bounty hunter with almost like an android type thing. Oh man, I'm getting a little bit nervous because that sounds really cool. All right, it's on, head to head, here we go. May the best woman win. What do you begin with? I'm gonna start with a good old fashioned skeleton first. If I get my stick figure in perspective now, I don't have to worry about it later. Literally, pretend like you're back in first grade and zoodle yourself out a good old stick figure. To make sure my guy looks like he's on the ground, you can actually draw a little platform which would look like if he's standing on that platform. If the feet look a little off, maybe you have to move them around a little bit like this one here. I'll set the foot back a little bit. I've got my skeletal structure. This is kind of my basic pose. I can see that this person is already ready for action. I have no idea at this point what the armor is gonna be, but before I can draw all of those fun details, I need to add in what I call the meat, so I'm gonna add in the muscular structure. For drawing these pectorals, it kind of helps that I've got this rib cage to put it on. Now I'm gonna do the fun part. I'm gonna start adding in the details. And because I have this basic blueprint, it's gonna be a lot easier to add all of this fun stuff. I usually like to start from the top and work my way down. So I'm gonna start designing a really cool helmet. Maybe I'll have these cool eyepieces. I'm figuring out what shapes I want the silhouette of this little robot arm to be. One thing I am doing is I'm using muscle groups to kind of figure out what kind of plating would be there. It'll make it read a little bit better, more like an arm. And then I can just add like little triangular pieces, rectangular pieces all over the place to make it look a little more spiky and interesting. We're gonna break off the face into its own separate little plate so it almost looks like it's clipped on the skin. So I think my guy's kind of goofy looking. But right now I'm adding in kind of plating that kind of goes around and accentuates the muscles. I feel like it'd be cool to have like these spikes to make it a little bit more like you wouldn't want to get into a brawl with this cat. These uh, shoulder pads almost look like cool turtle shells. It almost looks like Bowser. A little bit of shredder too. A little bit of shredder, I can see that. Laser cannon that kind of comes out of this wrist gauntlet. Some kind of cool utility belt that's just got all kinds of cool little doodads and whatchamacallits. Swiss Army knives, garage door openers, all kinds of gadgets. Little pouches and canisters, futuristic machete. Definitely gonna have some kind of groin plate, so if he gets kicked in the nuts, he can say, nice try. You're being really quiet. How bad is she kicking my butt over there? It gives the idea that it is a see-through dome. I think this guy needs a backpack. This guy maybe like travels around quite a bit as he goes on his adventures. Also, he's got this breathing apparatus. Maybe it connects, maybe the different planets that he's on, the air doesn't quite agree with him, or something like that. Connects to the armor here. Either radio antennas, weaponry, or hooks for hunting. I've got most of my details here, but right now, this is looking like a coloring book. So the last step that's really gonna bring this to life is shadow. So now I'm gonna start going through, I'm gonna start adding some form, some drop shadows, and really start making this look 3D. These little drop shadows just add so much. And in less than a minute, 
Matt has demonstrated great form in both shadow and technique. These a little sharp, spiky little plates, which honestly are probably not the best thing to be walking around in the middle of like a shopping mall. Or... After a point, it's like a little outside of reasonable disbelief. But then again, I'm literally putting a gun barrel on a giant sword. So we're right. not really going for realism here. So now to separate the armor from the suit that's underneath holding the armor, I'm just gonna add some line work that is tonally going to separate some details. But this line work is gonna help the armor stand out. It's not the size of your pencil, it's how you draw with it. I want this character to stand out a little bit. I don't have time to shade the entire background, but I want to put in just a little bit of tone. But when I'm designing a character, especially if it's a character that I know I'm going to end up having to redraw later, uh, don't do any detail that you feel is going to be like a pain in the butt to replicate. Like, you don't want to hate drawing your own character, right? I think I almost complicated it with the background, so I'm giving a little bit more of an outline. Like, it, it stays down until you don't want it to. See, like, it just lifted the entire eye off again. Well, if you're going for a wink, then you got it. I'm at the place where if I do any more, I'm just going to, it's going to be too much. Now that I'm looking at it, there is a little drop shadow I probably should have added right here. I like the multiple color choices here. You definitely have a cool, uh, a better weapon. So what is this thing? It looks like it's a sword and a, a is bit. it a? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's like a cannon built into the back part of it. It's kind of like a bayonet only on steroids. I love the asymmetry of having like the cyber arm with this cool thing here and then you've got the cyber leg. See, I'm not even remotely surprised. It looks awesome. I'm, I'm not even remotely. Well, thank you. I really yeah. like the, the, the look of those. I like the really chunkiness. Kind of reminds me a little Mega Manish. Oh yeah. Okay. I can see Just that. The winner is buying lunch, James. Who? I'm sorry. The loser is buying lunch, James. No, no. I like the winner. I like the winner is <laughs> buying lunch. Your outlines and everything else like that. It's just a much more finished. Do not sell yourself short there, Kristen, because like I said before, she is insanely talented, and you'll see more of that in the next okay. few videos. Lunch! Woohoo! Yeah. So because of that, we are going to go to my favorite fine cuisine. Sorry, uh, it happens to be Taco Bell. Oh, I'm okay with that. All right, so come back next time where we are going to be head-to-head -head once again with a superhero. Come back now.